What is up? What is up? What is up? Welcome to another episode of the Mitch Davis Show. We got the AutoZone Liberty Bowl less than about 15 days away, according to the runtime here. And on today's podcast, going to be joined by the play-by-play, the voice of the Kansas Jayhawks, Brian Haney. He is going to be joining me, talking about all things KU football ahead of the AutoZone Liberty Bowl matchup with the Arkansas Razorbacks. At this time, I'd like to welcome Brian to the Mitch Davis Show. Brian, welcome on. How are you doing? It's great to be on with you. Thanks so much for the invites. We're fired up to come to Memphis here shortly. And uh, for us, we've been waiting 14 years on bowl eligibility and a chance to be back in the postseason after the great Mark Mancino years here at Kansas. So I can't imagine any team in the college football universe more excited to be bowling than our Kansas Jayhawks and our fans that are about to flock to Memphis. So it should be a fun few days down there in Memphis. Let's talk about these KU Jayhawk fans. Obviously, you and I were talking about before I came on, I've been around them with Kentucky basketball, but some of the greatest fans in all of college athletics, and you guys have sold out of the allotment uh, that the Autos and Liberty Bowl has given you. Talk about those Kansas fans, and what do you expect to see out of the red and blue making the trip to Memphis? Yeah, I think because of the the fact that we've had such a delay going back to 2008, the Insight Bowl, uh, it's a fan base that has been starved for any kind of football relevancy, and to have a taste of it this year with Lance Leipold in his second season, it really kind of mirrors the the jump that Mark Mangino made in year two of his tenure back in 2003. That was a tougher bowl game to get to for Kansas because it was down in Orlando in the Tangerine Bowl, and they traveled well, but... It wasn't as long of a drought then, and it was a longer trek. This is more convenient. I like the date of it. Again, it's been 14 years since the Jayhawks have have been bowling, so I think it's going to be a very strong contingent. Obviously, regionally, geographically, it's a much closer drive for Arkansas fans, so you're going to have a lot of Razorbacks there too. But I think that uh, the Liberty Bowl folks have to be thrilled with both fan bases based on proximity, fan engagement, and and what they anticipate on the turnout. So it should be an exciting group of Jayhawks. This is the most healthy team we will have put on the field since mid-September, so uh, I expect our team to put up a great showing and and the fans to do the same in the stands and really be great representatives on all fronts on the 28th. Before we talk about the matchup with Arkansas, I think I got to ask you about the elephant in the room. Obviously, there were reports out there that you know Missouri and Kansas, the border war, uh, was going to take place in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Uh, it happened on Saturday in basketball. Just talk about that rivalry, and and obviously talk about that basketball game, and how much that would have meant to you know Kansas to play Missouri in the football game as well. Well, I, I think unless you grew up around it, you probably don't fully appreciate. The passion, the venom, the intensity. I mean, I've always said, and and folks in in, uh, SEC country probably won't agree with this, but outside of Ohio State, Michigan, and Duke, Carolina, when you talk about some of the most intense rivalries in all of college sports, to me, KU Mizzou was right there. And uh, the oldest rivalry west of the Mississippi, this is is a a passion and, and... I hate to use the word hate, but but there's there's a hatred or a, a venom. That's the better word, I think. Uh, the, the dates far back beyond collegiate athletics or collegiate academics or anything. I mean, this goes back to the Civil War, a free state, Kansas, versus a, a state that had slavery and, and Quantrill's raid in the, in the Lawrence and, and all the things that happened back then that makes the Kansas-Missouri uh, – this taste for one another, you know, loomed pretty large. And you had coaches back in the day, like Norm Stewart, who was the basketball coach at the time, that said he would never spend a penny in the state of Kansas. They would always gas up on the Kansas City, Missouri side of the state line before the bus crossed the border into into Kansas because they never want to spend a penny. Now, some of that is obviously, you know, overblown. I love what Coach Stewart has done with Coaches versus Cancer. He was one of the guys, really the, the catalyst for the whole thing. And so I have immense respect for him. On the Kansas side of the rivalry, you had Don Fambro, who was a legendary Jayhawk coach in two different stints here at KU. And he would always say in this gravelly voice that he had, Brian, it's not a rivalry, it's a war. <laughs> and, and he'd tell you these stories of, of, of how the fans would treat him. And shoot, man, my color analyst has been doing it for 40 years. He used to do sidelines, and he'd talk about getting pelted with bottles and stuff like that on the sidelines when he was down there. And so it's intense. Um, and, you know, some of it, obviously, on both sides with, with the fan passion, 
crosses the line. But a lot of it is is within bounds, and it's just good old fashioned college sports rivalry and intensity, unlike anything else we have. KUK State in the Sunflower Showdown is fun, but they've beat up on us, you know, for a decade and a half consistently in football, and it's been one sided in basketball pretty much for all the time. And so, to have a great rivalry, you need more back and forth and more competitiveness. And Kansas Missouri always had a little bit more of that. But then you add in the history that predates the universities, and you can see why it was such a uh, a bitter rivalry and a passionate one. So we were bummed that it didn't work out to get uh, the Liberty Bowl matchup. I'm sure tickets would have sold out on both sides within about an hour. But uh, this is still a great matchup. It's still an SEC school. And you know what? I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take the the high road, and it may sound like the political opinion here, but I I totally understand uh, in hindsight why Missouri made the move they did uh, with the, the same day basketball matchup with Kentucky at home. The fact that we have a, a series schedule with them come up here in a few years. Uh, it's disappointing the way it came out when it was first reported. I know Brett McMurphy was firing off some tweets and all that. It certainly had the Jayhawk fans uh, chirping and, and fired up the Mizzou. Apparently didn't want to play them. In, in hindsight, you understand some of the reasoning why they didn't. But hey, we'll take them on anytime, anywhere. And uh, we're looking forward to getting that football rivalry restored here in a couple of seasons after this next one. But uh, to have it back in basketball was great. To go in there and, you know, amidst uh, the most raucous environment we'll play in all year, uh, to have Kansas come out and win emphatically by 27. Largest victory margin in Columbia since the 1950s. Hey, man, that was just what the doctor ordered. And so in these first two years back, after a 10-year hiatus when Mizzou bolted for the SEC, Kansas has won by 32 and by 27, and we're certainly very proud of that. You know, I want to talk about this football matchup now with Arkansas, and I will say I'm going to have to come to a KU-Missouri game, either be in Columbia or there in Lawrence. I'm going to have to come out to a game like that. Oh my goodness, it's, it's unlike anything else we play all year because of the, the passion and intensity, but you know what, you just need to get to Allen Fieldhouse in general. I know this is a football interview and we probably spent too much time on hoops and historic rivalries, but we're so proud of, of having college basketball's greatest arena. Bill Self has a 95% home court winning percentage here. The original rules of basketball written by Dr. James Naismith, are on display here. He's buried on the east side of town, so while basketball was not invented in Lawrence, it was invented in Springfield, Massachusetts, he brought the game here seven years later. And uh, in 125 years of Kansas basketball, we've only had eight coaches all time. And believe it or not, Mitch, he's the one of the eight that actually has a losing record. Can you believe that? <laughs> That's a little bit of history there on James wow. Naismith. But uh, we're so spoiled. If you ever want to come, I'll make you my guest, and then we'll show you what we think is the best home court advantage in all of basketball. I'm definitely going to have to take you up on that uh, on that offer. I want to move over a little bit to this Arkansas matchup, and i got a couple questions. I'm going to let you go after that. Uh, but let's talk about Arkansas. What have you seen in this matchup? How does Kansas match up with the Razorbacks uh, from Fayetteville? Well, it's going to be interesting to see. I know they've had a couple of personnel uh, losses prior to the whole game, which is now becoming commonplace in college football, whether it's the transfer portal or guys declaring for the NFL draft and opting to skip the bowl game. I, I did a national broadcast a year ago of, of Florida, Central Florida, and you know the, the Florida defense had gaping holes at multiple positions of guys that just tapped out of the game. And I don't think that's fully going to be the case with Arkansas, but it's the reality in college football nowadays based on those two factors. And many times bowl games come down to who wants to be there more. Obviously, you know, a year ago they beat Penn State in their bowl game when they had an I win season and um, it's it's for us the first bowl game as we referenced in the decade and a half. So I think the want to factor clearly is on the Kansas side. But we'll see as we draw nearer to the game, you know, what some of the specific personnel matchups look like. But, you know, they, they clearly have had a couple of hits defensively that, that make things a little bit easier for Jalen Daniels, Devin Neal, and the Kansas offense. Daniels is our superstar quarterback that was sixth in the Heisman odds in Vegas before suffering a shoulder injury in week six when ESPN College Game Day was here and we were taking on TCU. Jason Bean came in in the second half of that game, threw four touchdowns, and we only lost by single score uh, and then he had to kind of you know tie the ship for the next 
four to six weeks while Jalen was working his way back. But uh, Jalen is fully healthy now versus Kansas State in week 12. He was running with the football again. His first game back, he was a little more protective of the shoulder, stayed back in the pocket, didn't turn it loose with the feet. But when he's able to, whether it's on design runs or option pitches or just making something out of nothing on a broken play, when he's able to take off and run assertively, he is so dynamic because he's got the big-time arm. He makes throws that you wouldn't expect him to be able to make. But when you have that threat of running as well, he's one of the tougher matchups in the country. And so, though this Arkansas defense still has plenty of talent, you know, containing him and Devin Neal when, when they get the run game going, I mean, you've got two you know, big-time running backs in, in this matchup coming up on the 28th, and I'm excited about that. But from our vantage point, Devin Neal had an outstanding season. Were it not for a conference with B. John Robinson and Kendry Miller and, and Deuce Vaughn, I mean, this guy would have been a first or second team all Big 12 running back. You wound up an honorable mention, but he had uh, over 300 total yards in one of our November games. He was fantastic, really, throughout league play. And even though we're down one back for sure in Daniel Hyshaw, the rest of our stable of running backs will be as healthy as it's been in quite some time. And so I, I think the Kansas offense, with an underrated receiving core, a great group of tight ends that I would put up against most in our conference, and then a quarterback that when he's been healthy is truly, truly special. I think they've got a really good chance to go out there and, and match Arkansas drive for drive. For me, you know, I look at the Kansas defense, and I think you get Craig Young and Lonnie Phelps a little healthy Healthier. They both look more explosive and disruptive in Week 12 versus Kansas State than what we'd seen the previous month. Now they've had three or four more weeks to get their legs back underneath them. And so even though it's, it's a fearsome matchup when you've got a guy like K.J. Jefferson directing the Arkansas offense, and I made reference to Sanders over here, their outstanding running back who averages almost 120 yards per game on the ground. I mean, that's, that's big-time stuff. you got 2,000-yard rushers both with double-digit touchdowns, two big-time quarterbacks that can also get it done with their feet. I mean, Jefferson's guys passed for over 2,300 yards, but also on the ground, 500 yards and seven TDs. Jalen Daniels' numbers uh, would be almost identical had he had the full season. So, to me, you got a couple of two-headed monsters to go back and forth, and it's my hope that our defense is a little closer to whole than what Arkansas's defense will be. But hey, let's make no mistake about it. This was a team that was preseason top 20 in Arkansas. They climbed as high as number 10 in the polls uh, after a 3-0 and start. We know what we're getting into here, but I think the want-to factor is something that you can't exactly quantify, but it's a huge factor in college football bowl games nowadays. And then we'll see what the final you know, starting lineups look like on both sides in terms of who's available. But KU will be healthier than they've been. They're going to come out with their hair on fire so excited to play in this game for the first time in a long time. I mean, think about it. Some of our players were, were still in preschool the last time KU football was in a bowl game. So they understand how much this means to our fan base to have this opportunity. And they want to go out there and represent Kansas as best they can. Last question I have for you is kind of a follow-up to that. And obviously making a bowl game is a huge deal, but for Kansas football, like we've seen with other basketball schools, quote-unquote basketball schools, it's a huge deal for the building blocks of that program. In five years, where do you see Kansas football? Well, the, the big news for our offseason, no matter what happens on the 28th, this has already been a victorious offseason because Travis Goff, our AD, was able to extend Lance Leipold and keep him here. Not just in a year where Leipold's stock was sky high because of the turnaround that's happened here at Kansas, but a year where two jobs that he's got a history at, he was very much linked to in Wisconsin and Nebraska, and believe me, we were hearing about it from mid-September on, and there was a lot of anxiety and, and paranoid Kansas fans. You know, we've had a lot of legendary football players over the years here. The late, great John Hadle, who just passed away a week ago. His funeral services are Friday. He comes to mind. Gail Sayers, Akeem Tlaib. There have been big-time football players in Kansas, but one thing that we've never had is sustained postseason success and appearances. When Kansas won the Orange Bowl in the 2007 season and finished 12-1, and they went to the Insight Bowl the following year. That's the only time in our history 
we've ever had back-to-back -back bowl seasons. I think Lance Leipold, with the financial commitment that Kansas has made to him, with the commitment they've made to improving facilities, uh, and also making sure he's got the resources to keep his staff intact, we're going to have more co coaching continuity than we've ever had. And I think this staff is positioned to strike while the iron's hot and capitalize on their success in recruiting more so than even what Mancino's staff did back in 07, 08, in part because of the coaching continuity and, and how many of these guys are sticking together. Back in, in that era, there were some coaching defections that, that led to Kansas not really reaping the harvest recruiting that they could have or should have back when they were winning 20 games in a span of two seasons. So where are we in five years, Mitch? I think the stadium, uh, you know, it, while it's, it's being renovated and, and not everything's going to be brand new, it, it's certainly going to look shiny and new. And uh, the facilities are going to be top-notch. The coaching staff, hopefully, in five years will have been to three or four more bowl games by then. And we're talking about a program that, for the first time in its history, is sustaining year in, year out, Big 12 Conference competitiveness and bowl eligibility. Maybe not every single season, but more seasons than not. And, and suddenly you're talking about Kansas not as a low-rung up ladder Big 12 team, but the type of program that any week, regardless of venue or opponent, the Jayhawks have a chance to win. And most years, you're seeing them in one of these bowl games that uh, have eluded the Jayhawks for a decade and a half. That's our hope. And, and it, it may sound like wishful thinking, but let me tell you, being here with boots on the ground in Kansas, with this athletic director, the new contract for Leipold, the plans for the stadium, the momentum this program and fan base has right now, I think it's very realistic to think that that could be KU's future if we can keep Goff and Leipold together for that full five years. And currently the contract's through 2029, and hopefully that'll be the case. He is Brian Haney, the voice of the Kansas Jayhawks. Thank you so much for coming on the Mitch Davis Show. It's been an honor. I look forward to welcoming you and the Jayhawk Nation to the 901. Hey, we're excited, man. I've been to Rendezvous Barbecue before. I need some additional you know, barbecue recommendations. We're pretty proud of Kansas City Barbecue. So prove to me when I get there that it's better in Memphis the way you guys do it. And I can't wait to, to try that out for myself. Mitch, thanks a lot. You put on a great show. And you were listening off to your previous guests earlier. I feel like you went for the low-hanging fruit getting the Kansas guy on. <laughs> Herb Street and Mike Leach and, and all these other greats have come on over the years. But I'm honored to get to come on with you. And let me tell you, we are so excited to be in the 901 here in a couple of weeks. So thank you so much in advance for your hospitality.